All right, guys, what's going on today? I've uh, done a little research online. I don't like the information that's out there about uh, car titles. So today I'm going to teach you what I know about car titles to help spread awareness if you're buying or selling or receiving a car title for some reason. So that way you know what to do and can get it filled out correctly. So that way you have to spend less time at the DMV less time going over paperwork and you got more time to enjoy and work on the car you got so I'm gonna start the video by okay so I have a title down here from Nevada and I have a title down here from Texas so I'm gonna go through and show you the differences and what to do I'll start with the Nevada title and then I'll switch over to the Texas title and I'll show you the differences and um, how to fill them out, how to make sure they get signed in all the right spots. So that, that way you're not wasting time at the DMV going in and out of there trying to get things figured out and trying to get a hold of the person who sold you the car because that is always the hardest part about when you buy a car from someone individually and you pay them the money and done they don't want to deal with you anymore most time they never want to see you again all right so trying to get a hold of them to get them to sign in this spot or fill this out is really hard and i'm going to show you what i know about titles so that way hopefully you can get everything filled out the first time correctly and it's a one-shot deal at the dmv and we can all move on and like i said enjoy and repair the cars that we own so I'll bring you in and we'll talk about the Nevada title first. And here's the Nevada title. If you notice, I got it um, covered up with some post-it notes in a few different areas to keep some stuff uh, hidden from you guys. Not that I need to hide stuff from you guys, but you don't need to know all the numbers. So first off, when you're looking at a title, right here will be the person's name and address. The address doesn't matter so much, but the name does. So make sure when you're purchasing a vehicle from someone that the name that is on the title is the name that's on their ID and ask to see their ID because if you it's especially if it's selling for a friend or this or that you know you want to make sure that the person signing the title is the person who owns the vehicle because if they don't then that's considered fraud and you can be charged with that and there's a lot of issues with that okay right here is the VIN. Now, second thing you want to do is make sure that this VIN number matches what the vehicle has on there. And every vehicle has the VIN number on the dash, especially modern cars, and uh, it'll be in the door jam on the sticker, it'll be on the firewall on some cars, you know, but make sure that VIN matches. And when you're looking at like uh, older Chevy trucks, they have a VIN number inside the glove box. It's just a sticker. Never trust that as the VIN number for the vehicle. Always find it on the metal because it is very easy to switch a glove box out and say that it's said car. So just keep that in mind. Over here where you see the other little covered up spot, this is the title number. This is what the DMV uses to keep track of the titles. This is the number they reference in their system. So what they're going to do when they get it is they're going to put this number into their system and it's going to bring up the VIN and the owner. And as long as that stuff matches and you got everything else filled out right, then they'll issue you a title. All right, and you can see that this is for the uh, 64 C10 back here. So it says 64 Chevy uh, model number you know, type, it's a truck, fuel type, fuel, or G for gas, 
uh, odometer reading. Now, once a car gets, I believe it's five years old, they no longer care about the odometer reading and you'll never be asked to provide that. But if a car is under that, they will want the odometer reading. Okay? And like I said, this is where this is. And if there's a lean holder, it'll be put in here. And if there's a lean holder, you need to have it signed off by the lean holder right in here. And you need to have a letter from that lien holder saying that the vehicle is signed off and they have no liability to it. Because if this is not filled out uh, and you go to get it, what they'll do is they'll put your name on here and they'll still have the lien holder on here and then you'll be responsible for paying the lien holder. So keep that in mind. You always want this spot blank, but if not, you want it signed off and a letter that comes with it that states that the vehicle has been signed off and the lien holder lean holder no longer wants anything to do with this vehicle. All right, now this is where, if you're buying the vehicle, this is where you put your information at. You put your print, you know, your driver's license number, all that stuff like that, and your address. So if you're buying the vehicle, this is where you fill it out. This is where you put the odometer at, and this is where the seller signs and the seller prints. This right here is for um, if it's being sold by a dealer. So don't worry about that. Just make sure that they sign and print here. Um, then you have right here the date of sale. If they fill this out, you have a certain number of days to go down to the DMV and fill it out. If not, they basically just jack the price up on you and just keep raising it and raising it and raising it until you have to do it. So, like I said, the person you're buying it from signs here and prints here. You fill this part out, but you can fill this part out and at the DMV, and they'll help you do that. Like I said, here's your lien holder, and here's the information of the vehicle. <clears throat> here on the back of the title, you'll notice there's several slots. But if you notice, it says for dealer only. Don't fill this stuff out. What this is, is let's say you sold your vehicle or traded it in to a dealer. They would fill this out. And a dealer has a funny way of doing things. They don't always have to report that they have a vehicle to the DMV. They don't have to get the paperwork in their name. They can just fill this spot out on the back, hand it over to you and you go down there and the DMV flips it over and goes, oh yeah, he sold it to the dealer, the dealer sold it to you. So there you go. And it's got three spots for that because it could transfer from dealer to dealer to dealer. And then down here at the very bottom is a spot for the lien holder so like if you were to purchase it from a dealer, they'd fill out this spot right here. And let's say you got a loan, it's a buy here, pay here lot, and you get a loan with them, then they'll come down here and they'll put their information here as the lien holder until you finish paying off the vehicle. So that, that way if something happens to where you don't pay, they have legal right to this car. But I'll talk to you about liens in another scenario. But anyway, that's a Nevada title. Um, I'll get you some close-up shots of it, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, and here is a Texas title. And you will notice the Texas title is a lot smaller. I don't know why they all can't be a universal size and a universal way to figure them out, but 
that all varies from state to state. And, I, and if I remember right, I believe the California titles are even smaller than this. And original pink slips are even smaller than this. But you won't have an original pink slip unless you're buying a car from the uh, late 60s, early 70s from the original owner. You won't have a pink slip like that. Most time you'll be issued a title like this or the Nevada one or whatever state you're dealing in. But anyway, on this one right here, uh, this is a Texas title. So right here is the name of the owner, name and address of the owner. Right here is the name of the previous owner and the state it came from. I've blocked out this person's name, but you'll notice it has the state for Arkansas. So the title to my S10 over here, came from, the truck came from Arkansas. And this was the owner previous to me. And like I said, here's the VIN number on it. So always make sure that that matches. You see it's a 2000 Chevy pickup. Right here is the Texas title number. Right here is the Texas title number. And right here is the Department of Motor Vehicles number, which I believe is the same as the Department of Motor Vehicle. Yeah, this is the title number, and this is the document number. Okay, title number, document number. All right, that's the stuff that the DMV is going to use. You don't have to worry about. I forgot to mention this on the other title. This is the date it was issued. So if you're looking at a title and it seems a little fishy and it's got a date for sometime in the future, you know that title's fraud. Um, on a Texas title, right here, you can see in this blank spot here where it wants a signature, the owner, so like this title is issued to me, so I'm supposed to sign here on receiving it. I haven't done it, and I'm not going to do it because I don't need to worry about it. But anyway, you want that signed um, if you're buying a vehicle from someone. So that has to be signed right there. But that is not the sign-off spot for the title. All right. Now, if you notice down here where it has the lien holder stuff, it's got three spots for lien holders, which is quite unusual. But if you notice right there, it says none. And on the Nevada title, it's just blank. So Texas title does have the none spot. And down here is the sign off for the lien holders. So you can have up to three liens on a car apparently because you know that seems like a smart idea. Right here on this title is where it'll say if it's a salvage title or clean title or something like that. This one happens to say that the VIN certification is waived and that's because the vehicle came from Arkansas and is supposed to have a VIN inspection. But since I live in a border town of Texas and Arkansas, both DMVs waive that because they deal with Arkansas and Texas titles all the time, so they don't have an issue with it. So it, notice it says uh, waived. Uh, right there is where the odometer reading would say, but it's exempt from that. So. Not a lot different, but there is some differences. I'm gonna pull over to Nevada title real quick to show you some things that I forgot to mention. Uh, on the Nevada title, if you notice right here, it says brand. So if it was salvaged or anything like that, it would list that here. Not to say the vehicle isn't salvaged or anything like that, but it was salvaged after the title was issued. So. Like I said, you can see that I've got this title here and it says that there isn't one. And I got this title here and it says that there isn't one. And I know in California, uh, salvage falls off after, uh, I believe it's seven years, but I could be wrong on that. So just keep that in mind. All right. And one last thing. Here is the date of issue for the Nevada title. So keep that in mind. All right, let's get back to the Texas title. Okay, so we've gone over everything in the front. Let's switch to the back. Okay, 
So back here on the Nevada title, right here is where you put the odometer, right here is where you put your information if you're the purchaser. So if you're the purchaser, you put it here, and right here is where the seller would sign, here and print here. And then you would sign and print there as the buyer. Buyer's on the bottom, seller's on the top. Keep that in mind. And then it has the spots for the dealers, just the same as the Nevada title, and the spot for the lien holder right here. So like I said, just a smaller size, but you do sign this one on the back, and I think it's because they give you so many spots for liens on the front. But you sign a Texas title on the back, I know you sign a California title on the back, so that's that. That's basically your titles in, an ish, uh, in a nutshell. Uh, I have another title over here from a friend of mine and I'm gonna show you what the salvage looks like. So if you notice right there, it says rebuilt salvaged issued by California. And it says that right down in this area on that title. So, if you're buying a vehicle and it says salvage, rebuilt right here, just keep that in mind. It's not a big deal. So, and especially if you're planning on turning a car into off-road use only or race car or something along those lines, it's not a big deal. Do, 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 do. Okay guys, so that's a little information about titles and how to fill them out. So the next time you're out there purchasing a vehicle, maybe it'll uh, help you out along the way. It'll uh, at least make it easier at the DMV when you go to transfer the stuff if you have everything right the first time. Um, I also can't stress more a bill of sale. Um, a lot of states you can go right onto the DMV's website and you can print out a uh, bill of sale and it's all labeled how they want it filled out and then you can have the you and the owner can sit there and fill that out together when you do the title transfer, uh, when he signs over the title, I mean. So that, that way when you go to the DMV too, you have a bill of sale stating that he's signing away his rights to this vehicle and that you are in return receiving this vehicle. The bill of sale is a lot easier to fill out than the title. The title still needs to be signed, but let's say you signed in the wrong spot or you did something wrong, the bill of sale will cover you in that sense. So just keep that in mind, always do a bill of sale. Uh, on the salvage title part, um, Vehicles can be salvaged for all sorts of different things, um, you know, from accidents to theft to it being turned in for scrap. So if you buy a car out of a scrap yard, it's going to be a rebuilt or salvaged title um, because the vehicle was turned in for the cost of the materials and um, because of that, when it's turned into a junkyard, they have to declare it to the DMV and the titles all get turned into the DMV. Because in order to junk a car, you also have to have a title, unless you're kind of doing it a back way. But to junk a car, you have to have a title and all the titles get turned into the DMV and then the DMV, from there, what you'll get from the salvage yard. So if you went there and you bought a car out of a salvage yard, they would basically issue you a bill of sale. Then you'd have to go to uh, the state in question, wherever, whatever state you bought it from, you'll have to go to their DMV, turn over that bill of sale, and then from there they should be able to issue you a title, but it will be a salvage title or branded title. So keep that in mind. Um, like I said, 
salvage is not the end of the world. Um, but what that salvage means is either the title has been turned into the DMV f for the vehicle to be destroyed or that the insurance company has paid out on it. So like I said, if the vehicle is stolen and recovered and um, the vehicle is stolen and they can't find it, and then years later they find it, um, then it'll be turned over for salvage. It'll have a salvage title after that uh, because the, the insurance company has paid off on it and they're forced. Um, but anyway, that's a little bit of title information. I hope that helps you for filling out titles and I'll catch you guys next time. Later.